So you've bought a 4G powered Lancer or Mirage. It has a sweet CD player, free air, it's really good at pulling out of parking garages, changing lanes, and makes you look cool when you stand in front of buildings. But something's not quite right. The girls aren't getting dressed up to go cruising in your sweet ride like the TV ads promised. So what are we missing? You are not going out in that. That car doesn't even have a bloody turbo. While the single overhead cam 4G powered motors are okay for daily use, let's be honest, they're severely lacking in the power department. <laughs> Luckily, there is a certain snail shaped object that can solve this issue. I think you know where we're going with this. If I had a dollar for every time I got a DM asking questions about how to turbo the 4G93 motor, let's just say I would have quite a bit of money. Ah, it's not a liquid! So I decided to do this video for you guys in depth, start to finish on how to turbo your 4G Lancers. I've put the links to every part that you'll need in the description of this video. You can also get 10% off all Max Beating Rods parts on the Max Beating Rods website. Of course, we are now rear wheel drive swapping our Lancer and putting a CA18 Nissan Silvia motor in it. If you wanna see more about that, go and check out all the videos on this channel and hit subscribe while you're there. But luckily we have a customer car in the shop right now, which funnily enough, the owner was inspired by our Fevo build and turboed their own Lancer that in the middle of the build at the moment and I thought that would be a perfect time to give you guys an in-depth rundown on how to turbo your 4G Lancers. Now if you have a 4G 15 motor I have your problems solved with that as well. My boy Rex H is the 4G 15 god. His turbo 4G 15 is amazing. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> So go check out his channel, links in the description and you'll get all the information you need on how to turbo your 4G15. But today we're talking about the 4G93 and 4G94 motors. Now these are the single overhead cam variant. This one is actually a 4G94 two litre version of the motor, they're basically identical. Now the first question everyone asks me is, can the stock internals on my car handle the power? Yes, absolutely. Even with the 4G15 as well, we've proven the stock internals are more than good enough for a nice amount of power. So on our motor, we made 160 kilowatts or thereabouts on about 15 pounds of boost. I ran that motor for 10,000 or so kilometers of daily driving it as well as my missus daily driving it and it didn't miss a beat, it was such a fun car. But the short answer is yes, the internals of your stock motor are more than okay to handle boost as long as you follow this recipe. And with that being said, let's get straight into number one. For the purposes of this video as well, let's go ahead and add the price tag for each item that you're going to need to turbo your Lancer. So the first thing that you are going to need is of course, a turbo manifold. Now there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. The customer here, for example, has gone for a cast iron turbo manifold. This is the most budget option. You can buy these on eBay. They are relatively cheap. They bolt straight up. And the best thing about these are they're super strong. Say you buy the cheaper manifolds from China and stuff like that. Whilst they do look fancier, they're actually a little bit worse because they're made out of a thin wall stainless material. They tend to crack. So these cast iron manifolds, if you are going for a budget option, is actually the option that I would recommend. Unless, of course, you're getting a full custom manifold made but then again that's quite an expensive option. The other option if you have any type of welder is that you can make your own turbo manifold. We built a turbo manifold out of the stock headers. It's quite simple if you have a welder and take a little bit of time and I think we made like 140 kilowatts straight off the bat with that turbo manifold. It worked quite well. There were never any issues with it but I decided to upgrade ours with a more custom style because I wanted a different sound out of the turbo setup. Now the second thing you're going to need it's quite obvious and that is the turbo. It makes all of the good noises. Now the really important thing to remember about the turbo is that you have a single overhead cam motor that doesn't exactly breathe as well as a dual overhead cam motor so you need to think about the size of the turbo that you're putting on the car. Even without the turbo these motors are quite lazy before about 3000 rpm so you want a really small and responsive turbo on the car. I know it's very tempting to go and buy the biggest turbo that you see the T3, T4 China eBay turbo on eBay and slap it in there which is actually what we did the first time around but you'll end up with quite a laggy setup. That means that the boost comes on properly around four and a half thousand rpm which is quite undrivable on the street and not really the most fun so what i highly recommend is the turbo that's on here it is the t28 turbo from max speeding rods it is a turbo that you would bolt up to a nissan Silvia with the sr20 det or the ca18 motor they're about the perfect size for you you could even actually go a little bit smaller if you really wanted but that turbo relatively inexpensive it sounds fantastic and it gives you all the boost that you need it's also internally gated now as you can see our car 
customer here has gone with an external wastegate. Sounds awesome. I probably wouldn't recommend it because it's extra work, especially if you've got a street car. I would keep the internal wastegate on the turbo for ease of install. The third thing you're going to need are the lines to oil your turbo. That is the oil feed line that you see right here and then an oil return line, which is the blue drain hose that you can see down the bottom. So the easiest way to do your oil send line is as you can see here. This is a T-piece that goes off the oil pressure switch and then you simply thread your line into the T and it goes all the way up and into the turbo. Then of course we have the oil drain here. So that's a fitting right here into the sump and you want to make sure that that has a really nice big vertical drop because you do not want your oil backing up this line and then going through the turbo seals and out the exhaust because that is gross. Also this is quite close to all the exhaust stuff so you want to make sure that that's nice and shielded. The next thing you'll need is the thing that makes your car look cool in my opinion anyway and that is the front mounted intercooler. So that is this thing that you can see right here and this is highly recommended because this keeps the boost that's going into your intake manifold nice and cool. Now my intake manifold actually used to get quite warm so the intercooler actually she played quite a big role in keeping the boost cold and us actually making the 160 kilowatts that we made with the Fevo. The higher your intake temps, the more chance you'll get detonation within your engine and your tuner won't be able to tune the power into your motor. So definitely go for the intercooler. Of course, the link to the intercooler kit is in the description. One quick thing to note here is clearly this setup is not finished, but the intercooler piping would come up here and go into the intake manifold. This guy here needs to go in front of your turbo into the piping. The next thing you need are fuel injectors because you need more fuel because you're adding more air into the motor. Luckily, this is very simple. STI WRX blue injectors fit straight into these motors. They are 550cc's, which should be more than big enough to give you guys the power that you're wanting to make on a stock motor. Link is in the description. And of course, with fuel injectors, you also need to upgrade your fuel pump. Now, unfortunately, that is kind of a hard job on these Lancers. Because the fuel pump is on top of the fuel tank, and you have to remove the fuel tank in most of the models to get the fuel pump out, which is kind of a mission if you don't have a hoist. It can be done with a bit of elbow grease, but it's not the easiest job. And saying that, you definitely need to do it if you don't want a viewing window into the side of your motor like you can see right here. The next thing you need to do is fabricate an exhaust. Again, there are a couple of options for this. You can make it yourself, which is what we did with the Fevo. Highly enjoyable experience, a big learning curve for me. But obviously you need a welder and you need some patience. If you don't have either of those things, you can get someone to make an exhaust for you like this one here. This is one done by Woz here at WozFab. And the customer actually just wanted the exhaust made up to halfway through to meet up with the stock exhaust and then they're gonna go ahead and add more on later. If you are building the exhaust yourself, please do not forget to put a flexi join in it. It's a mistake that a lot of people make and if you don't, it tends to break the studs off the back of your turbo because there's no give when you're going over bumps and the exhaust shakes around and snaps the studs. Just remember when you are doing the exhaust, flow is everything when you are boosting a motor. So bigger is generally better, somewhere around three inch. I ran two and a half inch with no issues. So the next modification is optional but highly recommended and that is replacing your clutch. It seems like a daunting task, but it actually isn't that hard. It will probably take you about a day. But the stock clutch is really not up to the job of holding the power that these motors will make once you put a turbo onto them and get them tuned properly. We actually slipped the clutch on the dyno at about 145 kilowatts. So that's probably where you're at with your stock clutch. I use my stock flywheel and a clutch can be had for somewhere around the $350 mark for an eBay one. They work perfectly fine. I've got a bit of experience with them. Never had an issue. So now the next thing is a big one and that is getting your car tuned. Luckily, and the best thing about these cars is the stock ECU is tunable if you have the plastic black cased ECU. Now there are a couple of things that you will need. They are tuning files and the definition files for the ECU so that your tuner can tune it. If you've got a Tactrix cable and the Tactrix lock and you've got a bit of experience, you can tune them yourself, but highly recommended that you put the car on a dyno. That's probably the most difficult thing you're gonna find is finding a tuner that wants to work with and tune these things. Luckily, I have a good friend who sorted me out. But basically, I had to trawl forums for hours and hours to find the right definition file for my ECU. But luckily, I've done the hard work for you guys. It's in the link in the description in my Dropbox. Hopefully, the files work for you. They should work for most people, but do get a tune because if you don't, your motor will run like crap. It won't run properly on those 550cc injectors. You have to get the car tuned. And if you try and run the car on stock injectors, it won't last very long at all. And again, you'll have another viewing window in your block. Lastly, you obviously want to do things like an oil change, especially if you haven't done one in a while. Change your spark plugs. BKR7E spark plugs are the recommended spark plug if you're going to turbo your car. There you have it. That's everything you'll need to turbo your 
your 4G93 slash 4G94 motors. I hope this video has been super helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If this video was helpful for you, hit that subscribe button. Again, we're doing the rear wheel drive Lancer build over here. It is a very exciting one, so join the channel uh, and good luck on your turbo building motor aspirations and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah. Cheers, peace, bye. Turbo cars, woo. <laughs>